Okay, so I am here today to talk about C's pitfalls or uh, common pitfalls that uh, beginner C programmers will have. Now, <laughs> C is a, is a funny language nowadays because if you even just mention C to most people, they get this nasty look on their face. It's almost like when you tell, uh, when you mention the word math to someone who's like a sociology major or something like that. And why is that, right? Why is it that Python and uh, C Sharp and Java and JavaScript are all so much, quote unquote, nicer languages to work with? Well, a big reason why is because of the uh, manual memory management in C. Uh, all the pointers and the, the uh, passing addresses and, um, you know, input output parameters and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I have to be honest, it does trip you up, and you will get owned by the C compiler. The C compiler is just completely ruthless, and there's not one poor soul who's ever programmed C and just always compiled it without errors. That makes that makes absolutely no sense. I mean, it's like watching someone uh, write their first C program is like watching someone play Call of Duty online for their first time with like a whole bunch of expert players that play 365 24-7. It's just, it's just brutal. So anyways, um, now that I got that little intro over, I have a little program here. It's got a, an enum in it, which is just a way to limit uh, the options of what a, uh, a variable can store, basically. So um, you know, if if we have a variable which is of type enum hair color, then it's only going to be able to be blue, black, brown, or red. Um, and then I, but I don't use that here, so don't worry too much about it. But I'm just trying to explain what you're looking at real quick. Um, and then I have a struct here, which we will be using, and um, this is a struct called uh, person. I type deft it, so in other words, uh, that way I don't have to write struct p. I can just say person in the code, and then um, the person has a integer age. Uh, they have a name limited to fifty, or at most fifty characters. Actually, it should be forty-nine because um, the last one's going to be a null terminator. And then um, I have two other uh, arrays of uh, person structs. So this is a group of 50, uh, up to 50 sons and up to 50 daughters that every person can have. And then now you have to remember that every single son is another person. And then that son has an age, a name, and then can have 50 more sons and 50 more daughters. And same with the daughters. So if you're familiar with any type of uh, data structures, like if we took a data structures class, like a, uh, a linked list or a tree, we got that going on here because um, these are pointers to uh, the same struct, basically. So it could basically go on forever. You know, you could have um, a person named Joe, and then they have three sons. Each son has five sons, and then each of those sons have 20 daughters, and then each of those daughters have five sons, and it could just go on until you know, as long as you want, basically. So it's like a tree. Now, this function right here is called change name, and it takes a, a pointer to a person, and it takes a, a string, or a, a char star new name. Char star is basically a string in C, because C doesn't have a string type. And then it takes a handle uh, to the process heap, which we'll talk about in a second. And now for the main program, the way this works is um, I declared two people here. We have person P1 and person P2. Now you'll notice that there's a difference in that person P1 has a star in front of it. Person P2 does not. So person P1 is actually, a, it's not a person, it is a pointer to a person struct, whereas person P2 is just a person struct in and of itself. It's not a pointer to one, it just is one. And all this really boils down to is, is that the location where the data is being stored 
is being stored in two different places. So um, for person two, it's being stored in the stack. Now the stack is a limited size. It's, it's, it's relatively small size. It can be up like a megabyte or something, somewhere around there, a megabyte, two megabytes. It can be changed, but it's just not made for dynamic allocation and for a whole bunch of uh, data to be piled on it. For that, we use the heap. The heap, now, um, person pointer P1 is not on the heap, though. Person pointer P1 is actually on the stack. However, it just holds a memory address. All a pointer does is it holds a memory address. It's just, it's a variable that holds a memory address. That's it. That's all it is, ever. So, the answer is, the way we set up a program like this, when we're using a, a struct pointer like this, is we say, okay, we're declaring this P1 as a pointer to a struct of person. And then we get a memory address. And then that memory address refers to a location on the heap. And when we place data in there, it, it is stored on the heap, even though the pointer itself is stored on the stack. So it's like if you go to your friend's house and he lives on Adams Avenue, and your other friend lives down the street and around the corner on Johnson Street, and you go to the friend that lives on Adams Avenue, and then he says, "Hey, let's meet at uh, let's meet at Josh's house, who lives on Johnson Street." So go to three five five Johnson Street. So your friend, uh, the one who lived on Adam Avenue, was a pointer. As soon as you went there, he pointed you to another address, and you went there. And then there is where. Uh, in you know inside of uh, Josh's house on Johnson Street, that's where the information is stored. This is the same concept here. So now, for a a regular person P two, a not a pointer for for a, uh, a just a person struct being stored on the stack, you can actually just declare it, and then you could straight up go ahead and go down here, and um, or actually go right here. Sorry. Uh, see how it says p2.name, uh, string copy Thomas and a p2.name. So all we're doing is see in other programming languages like Python, you could just, uh, I didn't mean to do that. In a programming language like Python, you could just type in like, you could just say, you know, p1.name equals Thomas like this. You can even do single quotes like that, you know. Now in C, in this situation, you can't do that. So you have to use string copy because there's not really a string type in C. It's just an array of characters, which is really ultimately what a string is in any language. But those languages give you some nice features to make it look like it's something different than that. So we're copying the string Thomas into uh, the uh, character array name, which belongs to the structure, uh, the person structure P2. That makes sense? So now whenever you refer to P2.name, you get Thomas. And we can go ahead and use it like that. That's it. Now we can't do that with P1. We can't we can't come down here and do we can't do this. We can't do P1 dot name uh, equals Thomas because we said like before. We also can't even do this. We can't directly do this. Um, we can't do this. The reason why is because we haven't actually told the compiler where that memory is that P1 points to yet. We just said, hey, P1's a pointer to a person, but we never actually, we never filled it in at uh, a location where the information is going to be stored. So sometimes if you do something like this, and by the way, dot is wrong here. That's That was my first point. You have to do this. You have to do arrow because the dot is here because um, it's the actual struct. It's not a pointer to the struct. But since this, since P1 is not actually the struct and it's pointing to the struct, when you dereference a pointer or when you go to the information that a pointer is pointing to, which is what the word dereference means, you have to use the arrow instead of the dot. So. That's the first thing. Now, the second thing is we still can't do this because it doesn't yet know where to store James, OK? Which is the reason why we have that line down below. Now, 
you might be able to get away with this and actually have it sort of work, but you, you should never do this. Um, in other words, you should never not set up space for um, for a pointer like this on the heat. Now, it's possible that, because what's going to happen is whichever memory address this P1 currently points to, it's going to go there and it's going to try to store some information. It's going to it's going to put James there. Now, in some cases, it might work. In other cases, it might not work. But the problem is, is that you don't have control over that memory. And even if it does work, you're going to get junk data and it's just it's it's going to cause a major problem and it causes what they call undefined behavior so you shouldn't do it so and that's the thing too so c so c sharp javascript and those other languages uh python and all that they will police you they won't even let you do stuff like this now granted you can't use pointers anyway in those languages well you can in c sharp technically but um it's like called unsafe mode but in plain old C sharp and in plain old Python and all that, you're not using, you're not manually controlling the memory. There are managed languages, which means that the memory is being uh, basically controlled for you and cleaned up and all that kind of stuff and allocated. Now the thing is, is, is that C doesn't do any of that stuff for you, and it also it will it will actually let you compile and build programs that aren't working properly. So it won't be like, hey, you shouldn't do that. It'll just let you do it. And then what will happen is you'll just get a nasty error sometime when you're running the program. And it will just make absolutely no sense. Like, for example, if I, if I did this, I'm just going to try to do this. Let's just see what happens, right? So um, let's say I'm just going to comment this out because I already have that line right here. So let's say I do some crazy crap like... Um, I go ahead and put James in the name spot, and then on top of that, I try to print out. Um, I try to print out James's age, even though we we never even assign an age to P1, right? So I'm just gonna put James's age, and then uh, percent D, and. And then I'm going to put P1 dereference uh, age. So we never even gave him an age. So it's we don't even really know what's going to happen, but it's not going to be good, though. So in a, another language, it wouldn't even let you do this, basically. But watch. You'll see what happens. Let's see. So it built, right? So I'm just going to run it. So check this out. It says... James's age, 63569, so it says he's 6,356,956 years old, even though we never even gave him an age. And the reason why that happened is because uh, the, the C just went ahead and um, it just went to some random memory address, which was whatever uh, the space for P1 was placed at. And it went ahead and looked, you know, it went, because what it does, so age is the first uh, member of the structure person. So whatever address it found in this step right here, it's going to go and integers uh, amount of bytes into it and read that information. So in order for it to get to name, what it has to do is it has to say, okay, how big is an integer? Okay, an integer is, you know, X amount of bytes because it's different on different systems. But, um, you know, let's say an integer is two bytes, for example. So now what it's going to do is it's going to skip the first two bytes of the structure. So it's going to get an address here. So, and then what it's going to do is it's going to go that address plus two bytes down. And then it's going to take you to name. And then it's going to read out the name, for example. Okay, so in this case, what it did is it went to whatever address we got for uh, for P1 in this step, and then it went ahead and uh, just read out the first bytes here, which were supposed to be the integer for age, but since we never assigned anything, there was just some random number uh, of information that was already in there from some other program or something. And so that's not good. That's, that's undefined behavior, and you don't want that in your program because that can obviously crash things because let's say... We said um, for every year this person is old, go through a loop. Well, now the loop's going to go this many times when it should have gone maybe 30 times or something. So so that's a, a big uh, issue in C for a lot of people is just that it doesn't police you.
And even when you do get errors, they're not nice errors like C Sharp or Python. They don't tell you everything. Sometimes it will just say segmentation fault. And to an experienced C programmer, yes, we know what to look for. But if you're not, you just, you're just you like, okay, well, what does that mean? You know, It could mean a lot of different things. So let's go ahead and clean up this program now. Um, I'm going to take this out because we don't actually want that. And then, um, yeah, we don't need this either because I've already demonstrated that. So the proper way to do this is to equate the, the uh, P1. So notice you don't put a star here in this case. You just say P1 equals, and you could use the malloc function. And, and in that case, you would have to uh, malloc, you would have to do, um, I'll just show you really quick. You would have to do this, P1 equals malloc. And then you would say size of person. And then what that's going to do is it's going to get the number of bytes that make up the size of a person structure. And it's going to set aside those bytes. And then it's going to take the memory address of where those, of the, where those bytes start in memory. And then it's going to put it in the P1 pointer. So now when you refer to P1, you're referring to uh, a spot on the heap. And uh, that heap memory is now freed for you to go ahead and, and assign information. So you could say P1 name equals or uh, P1 age equals or you can add sons and daughters and all that stuff and you'll be just fine. So that's one way to do it. Um, that's what most people do when they're programming in C. But I'm just messing with the Windows API functions right now so I can uh, better learn them. So the way I did it, and by the way, if you're going to do this way, you need to you need to have uh, pound include stdlib.h up here, which I don't have because I'm not using malloc. So I'm going to get rid of malloc. And now um, I'm using heap alloc. Now, the way this works is... Um, so malloc is a C standard library function, and what it does is it it, it makes the C programming and uh, compilation process uh, compatible with different machines and different uh, operating systems. So for example, you can use malloc on Windows, you can use it on Mac, you can use it on Linux, but that doesn't mean that Windows, Mac, and Linux are the same operating system and they actually allocate memory the same way. They don't. And so if you're on Windows, you can use this function called heap alloc. And now if you do this, your program won't be compatible with Linux or Mac. It's just going to only be compatible with Windows. Um, but you can do this. And this is actually this is actually what malloc will do behind the scenes on a Windows computer. So malloc eventually just becomes heap alloc or, uh, or um, virtual alloc is another one. There's, there's several memory functions that are built in to uh, the Windows API. And so, so basically on a Windows machine, you can just go ahead and call these API functions directly if you want, which is what I've done. And in order to do that, you have to uh, pound include windows.h. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, all we're doing here is in order to use heap alloc, you have to first get, uh, so every single uh, process for every program comes with a default heap, it's called. It's just operating system stuff. So you automatically get a megabyte of heap space with every single process by default. Um, that's what the operating system gives you. You can change this when you're compiling it. You can ask for more if you want or less or whatever, but you automatically get a megabyte. So what we want, since that's sufficient for us, because that's a million bytes and we're not going to use that much, is we want to get that heap. We need to get a, a handle, it's called, or a pointer to that heap. And so um, all we're doing here is we're getting that heap and then taking the location of the heap and storing it in process heap. Now, in order to allocate heap memory on using the Windows API, you have to specify the process heap address handle right here as the first argument to heap allocate. Then I have heap generate exceptions, which will just tell us if there's something that goes wrong. It will stop the program and display a message, basically, rather than just keep going and then crash. And then, um, again, the number of bytes, just like how we do with malloc, um, we want the size of, which is a function that's built into C, and then the person struct. 
So it's going to take however many bytes uh, these all add up to be, and it's going to allocate that much space on the heap. And it's going to store it, or it's going to uh, return a memory address, which is now going to be in, uh, stored in P1. Okay, So that's the difference. So you can see there's quite a lot more going on when you're dealing with uh, what they call dynamic memory or heap memory versus when you're just straight up dealing with stack memory, which is where you can just straight up declare something and you can just define it and you can just go ahead and use it. Um, with heap memory, you're declaring a pointer, then you're assigning that pointer to a location in, on the heap. Then finally, you're going and you're placing the information on the heap. And then after that, even when you're done with it, you need to actually free it. And that's what I'm doing right here. So um, I'm running uh, heap free, specifying the um, the default heap again, and then um, I'm passing the heap memory that we just allocated so that it will be freed. And then as you can see here, I do a little bit of uh, error checking. If the function succeeds, it will tell us that it freed. If not, it will say failed to free. So that's a very, 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 very huge uh, step as a programmer, if you're not familiar with this stuff, you're going to have to play with that for, for a long time because there's all these stupid little errors that can come up as a result of messing with all this stuff. It, it looks, it sounds like it might even be pretty simple, but then when you actually go to do it, you're like, whoa, what's going on? And you start getting all these crazy errors. And um, so I'll, I'll show you an example of this right now. So I made this function called change name. And all it does is it takes a new name as a string and it takes the person that we want to change and then it takes um, the current process uh, heap handle. That's all it does, right? However, we have to be careful here because, so let's say we want to change the name of person two. Well, we can't just put person two here because I've specified in this uh, function definition that we're to receive a memory address here. That's so when I say person star person, the function is expecting a memory address. And that memory address will point to a person. It's not expecting the actual person. So we can't put P2 here. We have to put ampersand P2, address of P2, because P2 is on the stack. Now, if we wanted to specify P1, we could just do so without the ampersand. And the reason why is because P1 is a pointer, and it already is an address to um, the struct. P2 is not an address to the struct. It is the struct itself. So I'll show you what happens when we, don't, when, when we break the rule I just said, right? So I'm going to save this file, and then I'm going to compile it, and we're going to get an error. See? So... We got this error. It says incompatible type for argument one of change name. And then it says expected struct person star, but argument is of type person. So see, we, um, P2 is a straight up person. It's not an address to a person. Now, struct person star would mean an address to a person. And that can be confusing as well because we now introduced um, a couple of new concepts, one of which is the ampersand, which says address of. Now, if you do ampersand P1, you're going to get the address of the address of a person. So you're going to get um, a pointer pointer, basically, a pointer that points to another pointer that finally points to the actual heap memory. And we don't want that either. So um, if we do this, this also won't work. Because now we've specified that we want a pointer to a pointer, and that's not the right type either. So you can imagine here and you can see that um, stuff can get kind of tricky between um, the ampersand, the star. I mean, all you got to do is forget one of these things and it, you'll be like, wait, what the heck? I have P1 in there. Why is it telling me that, you know, P1 can't go there and this and that. Now, if we just leave it as straight up P1, you'll see it'll be fine now. See, and now the program will work again. So um, now another problem that can occur, which is uh, I gave an example right here, is, is that now once, you're, once you have the actual address and you're in the function and everything seems fine, let's say we want to take 
because um, if you look here at this program, what it does is it says, James has successfully been renamed to Jim A. Jim A. So um, what, the way we did this is we had to store the old name in this temp uh, string right here. And then we went ahead and changed the the actual name. And then we ended up actually uh, citing the the temp name again down here. Otherwise, we would have just said Jim A got changed to Jim A because we never stored uh, the name of the person that was about to be changed, right? So you'd be tempted to just go ahead and do this. You'd be tempted to say char star temp equals person uh, dereference name, right? Because that makes sense, right? I mean, you're setting the temporary uh, string to the person's name and this and this type of thing would work in python or c sharp or java and uh, php and other languages like that but this is a big no-no in c because what's going to happen if you leave this is it's going to set temp as a pointer to the address of uh, this person's name so now when we change temp it's actually going to change the actual uh, person's name and we're so in other words temp and the person's name are both pointing to the exact same place in memory and therefore if you make a change to one it's going to make a change to the other one so i'm going to go ahead and show you what happens when i do that and i'm going to i'm going to comment that out and you'll see what happens see the program compiles i run it and um So now what we did is we set temp equal to name, and then we, we, we allocated some memory to it, which is very strange, and then we copied the name to temp, but temp was also pointing to the name. So the proper way to do this is to, um, would be to not do this, and instead declare temp, allocate memory for temp, size of new name, Um, actually size of person name, not size of new name, because we're storing the old name there. So that was a bug. Um, and then we will copy uh, the person's name to the temp. And then finally we will copy, or we will, um, yeah, we will copy the new name that we were just given into the person name. And then we will print out the two just like we did and we're all good so as you can see we went ahead and allocated some memory but the thing is we never freed the memory so now what we need to do is we need to free the memory so um we will do um we will do just like we did down here we will say we're just going to keep it simple usually you would do error checking but we're going to keep it simple um because this video is going too long and then um, we're going to go ahead and free temp, just like that. Write the program, clear it out, compile, demo, boom. See, James has successfully been renamed to Jimmy. So, J Jimmy. All right. So anyway, so yeah, I mean, you're just if you're new to C and you're just learning this stuff, trust me, you're going to get, like, pwned left and right by the compiler. You're just going to get, like, slapped around for probably weeks because, I mean, unless you're just doing this, like, all day, every day, and you finally get it down, it can be real hard to follow this stuff, and it can just throw your brain off because there's, like I said, in some cases, you will just go ahead and do char temp something, and then in other cases, you'll do char star temp, and then, you know, and then in other cases still, you'll have to use ampersand temp, and if you mix any of those things up, then um, you will have errors, and the problem is, too, is sometimes you won't have errors, and what you'll have are memory leaks, and which means that you're not, you never actually accounted for the fact that you needed to free some heap memory, and you just left it, and you just progress with the program. And that can happen easily when you're doing a lot of um, when you're doing a lot of um, decisions, uh, you know, if statements, because maybe you accounted for freeing memory in one case, but you didn't account for it for the other case. 
and you know branching and stuff like that. So um, we've covered enough today, and I hope you've learned some stuff here. But um, yeah, just prepare to get owned by the compiler for a while. And I, I recommend the tools uh, Doctor Memory if you're on Windows, and uh, Valgrind if you're on uh, a Linux system, and it will help. Uh, it'll help you take care of those memory leaks. All right, guys, take care. And I know it's been a long time since I made another video, but um, I'm going to start trying to make some more videos now. All right.